Right, this morning I'm in the laundromat checking how everything dried up. Everything looks pretty good so far. But we'll obviously make a final decision once we get down into the shop where it's warm. Now we basically resprayed all the black, did all the touch-ups on a previous video. I hope that's going to, uh, if, if not solve the problem, at least stack the deck in our favor. And every trip out to the laundromat in the morning, we harvest more parts. I feel like a farmer. It'll be a lot better having this stuff down in a cellar where I can check it out. And we're coming up pretty soon on a day we're going to lay out the ladder stripe, which means i got to put the bodywork back on the bike. I'm going to do that on a dedicated day. day. Uh, today is going to be a short day because we have family stuff to do. And we're in the holiday season. Now I've learned a couple of good lessons. There are many times that I would take parts, leave them in the garage overnight when it was, of course, we're doing this in the winter, when it was below freezing, come in and just run a hairdryer on and rip up the tape. Well, I learned a lesson. That's not the best way to do it. The best way is right now, go have a cup of coffee, let these parts get to ambient temperature before I even try to take the tape off. Really, really an important concept. When tape gets cold, especially below freezing, it not only has a tendency to pull up the paint, if that's a problem you might have, but it leaves a residue of tape. The, the glue stays on. Once you warm it up, and so if they're out in, in any kind of a cold environment, believe me, a hairdryer and warming them up, you're never going to go wrong with that scenario. And as I try to plan out this week, it's going to be more difficult than I thought because of the weather being variable. But I do need that dedicated day to put all these parts onto the bike and lay out that critical stripe. So for right now, I've had a good cup of coffee. I've had some time to let these parts warm up. Let me get out a hair dryer and just make sure we don't leave any of that tape residue on the parts if we don't have to. So after warming these up, now I have to be careful. It's that tape. I don't want to leave any of that residue on here. And I know these, these parts are not, I'm not dealing with brand new sheet metal here. That's for sure. So I want to give this every chance in the world. Now, there's a, a good point. Steve brought up a good point. He said, oh, I looked on the internet and a lot of guys pull up the tape an hour later, some two hours later. It depends on shop conditions. To get that nice, real edge, you got to see what shop conditions work for you. I've heard an hour is a good time, but I like to let it sit overnight. I always seem to get a better edge that way. But my shop conditions are below freezing, so it could vary. I don't think it's a critical thing, but it's certainly something. Now, there's, there's always a thing, too, about removing tape, and I want to show this. I want to keep it warm. And it, it actually, down here in the cellar, it's not even that warm. Now we're going to leave that blue stripe on because that blue, what amounts to be the blue, is actually going to be a white stripe. But up here, this is going to be, it just according to Steve's concept sketch, this is going to go. Let's just see if we got that. Yes, we do. And so this piece now, once it's tack rigged down, we got our first piece out, out of the, uh, ready for back masking. Now even these small parts, now I'm not actually leaving a paint edge here. I'm leaving an edge to tape. So that blue is going to ultimately be our white stripe. And in the previous videos, I tried to detail out why I laid this out in this manner. I think it's good information. But here's something from the last video. Look at the difference in the, the look and feel of that. We had all, all funny stuff going on there. So I know that's, that's just going to make Steve a lot happier than, well, you know, Steve, he's a discerning, a discerning connoisseur. 
You just never can be too patient or too careful. Now, if we had a shop, obviously, if we had a shop where we could let this dry inside the house, a little bit of overspray there comes right off with your fingertips. This won't matter. We can wipe that right off. But spending that extra time to do the black over and give it a second coat, really worthwhile. I think really worthwhile. I guarantee you Steve will agree too when he's here. Because once we get the red, then he's going to have to stop by for a day of... I think he has some decals, but I'm not sure. Well, it looks like the parts are warmed up. We've got that part off. Now, the next time I, uh, I get some time, and I may have this afternoon, I'm not sure. We never know from day to day. Every day is an adventure, but I wanted to get the tape off. One of the lessons I learned is never leave the tape on any longer than necessary. And that's the way I've done this, and using the heat to take it off has worked pretty well for me. And believe it or not, it looks like it's, it's just starting to look like Vince's BMW. It looks like we may have some time to paint this afternoon, but I won't know for another hour or so. But getting that back masking off, that was a nice nice big step to get done today. You know, I got back from taking uh, Karen to do some family stuff, and I look up at the sky. It's, it's in the 40s, and I'm just thinking, hey, I ought to go for a motorcycle ride, but then I thought, oh, I can get that red painted today. I'll get the back masking done, get that painted, It'll actually be after how cold it's been, and with the wind blowing, it looks like it's going to be a great day to get Steve's red painted. And all that work we did on these parts, uh, every, every one of them now, I see. See, it's the day you spend that couple of hours, or I think we spent three or four hours, but then you come the next day and you look at it and you say, wow, am I glad I did that. And it's the opposite when you don't do it and you see a, something that you're not happy with, some contamination in the paint. And then you have to live with it. I still think this looks like Vince's motorcycle. But anyway, I'm going to get this back masked, and I think it's going to be a great day to paint. So if this weather holds up today, there's no telling. You never know. I, but I really am. I really am surprised. We went shopping. We're doing a little Christmas shopping, and uh, when we left, it was really cold. We get back, it's beautiful. And the back masking on this, relatively simple, but I want to get the edges as nice as possible. The idea is to back mask anything that's black. And we already have this tape line on, so now I wanted, and I'm going by Steve's sketch, and he, he's got a real nice sketch of how this should be, so I'm just following it. And rather than belabor this point, because it's really uh, pretty cut and dry from this point on, and we've done this so many times, you would think we'd be better at it. <laughs> Not really. Just the, the tips for people that uh, this may be the first video you ever watch. I try to include it on all the videos because a lot of the people I know are from the world of model planes, especially they're excellent craftsmen and we share information. And that, that seems to be one of the reasons uh, maybe I should mask off the, the correct side. <laughs> That's why I'm not rich. Talented, maybe, rich, not so much. I saw one of the best videos I've ever seen on YouTube last night about the, the 
most expensive yacht in the world. And you'll love this story. I won't waste your time, but this guy in Hong Kong has a, a, a multi-billion dollar yacht that the, the knobs for the doors are made out of T-Rex bones and it's got moon rock for things and just gold plated everything. And then I thought to myself, you know, when I was younger, Ray Straub, my friend Art, Frank, we had boats and I bet we had more fun than that guy. Guarantee it. Because we were good at having fun without breaking the bank. And it worked. Anyway, I'm going to backmask these all up. I'm excited to see how to red. Steve's got a, a color red that he's used already, but we have a fresh can. And we're going to be ready to paint in 15, 20 minutes. Now after back masking this guy realized this we don't see the stripe so I have to go back and I just want to I don't want to have a white stripe there good thing I checked my work right I can see hope Steve doesn't cut my bonus payment down here anyway we are working off Steve's drawing And it's pretty common for me to look at something three times and still get it wrong. I'm sure old age has something to do with it. But anyway, it's Karen just yelled down at me that it's it's in the 40s now. She was expecting I was going for a ride, so maybe I should have gone for a ride. Steve, you owe me a ride. I'm not sure where though. But anyway, we'll just re-back mask this again. No big deal. But it just shows you uh, how easy it is. It's beyond easy to get these things wrong. That's why I sit here with the drawing right in front of me and I still get it wrong. So what does that tell you about my IQ and my, uh, my college scores and wow. And that's basically why we always have extra rolls of tinfoil around. Now, this is one, a step that I have taken many times. I see this is in pretty nice shape, but just before I paint it, I'm just dusting it. I'm not doing anything. All I'm doing is dusting this off. Some 400 sandpaper. I'm not sanding anything. Then I'm taking a clean paper towel. I'm doing this to all the parts, getting them ready for the red. And then a tack rig, ordinary tack rig. And then I put these on a bench. These are basically then ready to go. And hopefully what that gets rid of is if we have any contamination or anything on these. We're really coming down a home stretch here and every step I want that to be as flat as possible. So everything's back bass, tack rigged, cleaned, prepped in every way you can prep it. I'm mixing up the red paint. Let's see how this lays out. I always start with the smallest parts first, make sure I've got uh, the gun spraying, that I'm happy with it. We're ready to move on to these parts and fill up the laundromat.
Now at the end of every day, I come to the laundromat to get my laundry. Wow, this was some long productive day. Wow. Freezing? You can bet I'm going to be having about 10 extra cups of coffee right now. Wow. But that's going to dry overnight out here in the tundra. Tomorrow we'll pull it in, pull off the back mask and see what, if any, touch-ups it needs. Because we did have some touch-ups on the black. May have touch-ups on the red. Who knows? Anyway, this was a long day. Steve, I hope you enjoyed this. And I guess the next step we need to do is uh, get those decals. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And well, all that extra time we put on this project, it's all starting to pay off now. And thanks for watching. Thanks for coming to the laundry and doing your laundry. Bring lots of quarters.